Howard and I met on a blind date. He was a very quiet, quiet, quiet guy. He had just recently rededicated his life to Christ, so you could tell they had this little fire burning. About a year after we had started you know, just hanging out together and being friends. He finally told me he loved me and I loved him too. And then we got married a year after that. As a couple, we were each other's God's reminders. I'd have these panic attacks and that's when he would remind me, you know, you're not gonna be given anything that you can't handle. Um, and just in different situations, things I knew in here and in my heart, it just he was the one who said, hey, don't you remember, this is God's promise. Um, on Mother's Day weekend, uh, May 2021, my mom woke up uh, to go look outside because she had heard Howard go out and let the dogs out. And then she heard it raining and she wondered, why hadn't Howard come back in? And she saw him lying face down on the ground. The ER doctor said it doesn't look good. Later on in the second day, we did find out that because of his lack of oxygen during the time, the edges of his brain had, had died. The doctor that was on duty at the ICU at that point in time said, you have two options at this point. Um, you can um, keep him on the ventilator, but I don't think he will wake up. And so now I, I needed to, you know, basically talk to God and Howard. And it was just a lot of, let me keep them. Just please, please, please let me keep them. Let me keep them. Let me keep them. I think God and Howie were waiting on me to say, to say goodbye. And because he went peaceful, I felt peaceful about the decision that I made. And that was probably one of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make. <laughs> but I knew I made the right one. It was really awful walking in here for the first time without him being here. I didn't know how to be Laura without Howard. And that was kind of kind of disturbing to me. Like, I, I don't know who I am without you know, if I'm not Howard's wife. I was tired of grieving. I was tired of like feeling awful all the time. And I was tired of, of being sad. After one Sunday, John had texted me and said, would you be interested and hosting online worship. And I just wanted to get out of myself. I just wanted to just not have to think about my grief, think about somebody else. Oh, that felt so good. <laughs> it felt so good. And service by service, and online, online conversations by online conversations, I felt like grief is just not my whole life anymore. Even though a part of me, a part of my life is no longer, there is something new that is waking up inside of me that is giving me new life. And I am living a new life through Christ, not the way I ever thought I would, <laughs> but I'm in a new chapter of my life.